Mono Collins and Captain Foley here yet again, as were well every Wednesday, for another relaxed discussion, improvisational look at a ship of the Trek or other Trek universe. Um, discuss, theorize, and try and get to the bones of it, the meat of it, and see what we think, and 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 then get you guys' information in the comments below, what you know, and make a an amazing full show later on. It's kind of ironic that you said the bones and the meat of it, considering the name of this <laughs> ship that we're doing this week. Uh, this week we're taking a look at a rather unusual ship, and even if I said the name, the jellyfish, which don't have any bones, or well, I guess they do have meat, but kind of jelly. Anyway, most people wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but then again, a lot of you do. This is the 24th century Vulcan Science Academy ship Prime Spock was piloting before he got pulled back in time in the J.J. Abrams 2009 Star Trek movie. So this is a prime timeline design. 54 meters in length, just smaller than the Maki Raider at 60 meters. She was commissioned in 2387, just eight years after Nemesis by, as you said, the Vulcan Science Academy. So this is an evolution on the other Vulcan ship designs we've seen? Or at least potentially? Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> so yeah, a very interesting ship which is supposedly prime time. Well, it is. But it is. No, it's supposedly. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, let's get on to the first picture and take a look at this rather unique craft. So side view. Okay. It does look like some kind of aquatic life form, oh. yes. <laughs> spot on, guys. Spot on. Okay, but, but first of all, as we always do, um, do you, well, do you remember seeing this? 2009, you're in the cinema. I know you saw it a couple of times in the cinema. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you first saw the jellyfish? I thought, what in the hell is that? And why, why, why? <laughs> why make a ship that's so... I get, I get... I get the, the premise of a small one-man ship. I do understand that. The shuttles but, exist in all of Prime Timeline. Exactly, but something so complicated with such a cool little impeller drive thing. It's, it's like it's like the ship, the that the uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon take from, and uh, when they're on Naboo, the little one that goes underwater with the oh, spinning the, thing at the back. Oh, the Unabongo. Yeah. Yes, it's like the JJ took that ship, turned it sideways, and put it in space. That actually very close to yeah, that's very close to time was, huh? Yeah, so that's I wasn't one. super impressed with it, and I was like, why? Why would the Vulcan Science Academy have a ship like that? It just seems impractical and just flashy and showy, just for the sake of it. And one of the strange things is it's so on the nose. The jellyfish, okay, and it looks like a jellyfish, okay. <laughs> I are, they, are the Vulcans trying to be ironic here? I mean, that's so unlike them. Are you kidding? I mean, I, it's mm. it's like it's like an April Fool's prank. It, somebody it said somebody drew up this design and went, oh, "Look at this ship!" Vulcan, like, yeah, it's Vulcan. a great idea. Let's let's build that. Yeah, it's Vulcan. <laughs> yeah, because the the things. No, I mean, I saw it in two thousand nine, and I and I I didn't from from sort of prepping prep for this episode. You really do have to take into account this is prime timeline. So when the art team, our art department at um, Bad Robot designed this, they had to look at other contemporary designs. They had to look at other 24th century designs because you can't get away from the fact that this is a 24th century Vulcan-style ship. Now, while we haven't seen Vulcan designs since Enterprise, well, since the motion picture, but that's a, a warp shuttle, fine. That, that Okay, sure, there's a leap in tech, but we know the culture, and we know the culture hasn't evolved too far because we have seen Vulcans throughout. Um, it's one of those strange things. Same with the Kelvin. They, they took this vague... It's Star Trek, but then they completely ignored the, the, with the Kelvin and with this ship. This was that was their chance to really bring in the prime elements, make it very canonical, make it very right, and then next film swap it all around, which would have been fine. But for some reason, they pushed it into this odd dimension of that's not a Vulcan ship, it's not a Starfleet ship, it's not a Federation ship, it's not it it's not it's just a, it's, it's a it's a Star yes it's a Star Wars alien. Um, tentacle ship, like it's a strange a jellyfishy alien race. Like, there's nothing really about it that says 24th century Vulcan. Apart from you've got the Idic sign, which like I know they did as a, a little homage, but just having a symbol somewhere. You know what it looks like? You know you know Vulcan ship. I know. You know what fleet it looks like it belongs to? It looks like it could be cruising side by side with the NESA protector. NSA. Uh, yeah, 
Closer. Certainly closer. Same same color than those yeah. two things at the back, the way they do that. Very better, reminiscent better curves. of the... Yeah, or, or just, or even Saren's, another one of those. Well, actually, no, those, those alien race, the um, Thermians, were tentacle race. So, yeah, if they designed their own ship, I would have absolutely bought this. Absolutely, yeah. So, so Galaxy Quest, which in itself is a parody, so it makes sense to be a parody ship. Uh, but let's move on to the next picture because it gives a better dimensionality feel for it. Um, this is obviously a concept drawing, but it's such a strange ship. And I don't understand why Spock... He's never been a pilot in his entire life. He's well, never that's been... not true. In the immu immunity syndrome, he sh flew the shuttle into the single-cell organism. Right, so he can pilot... A shuttle. It's not Great. a speciality, that's for sure. No, he's a, he's a, he's a commander. He's a scientist. He's a tactician, and he's a, you know he trained cadets for a bajillion years. You know he's, and then he's a diplomat for for a hundred years. I understand his guilt and all that, but you would send a pilot for this mission. You wouldn't send an almost senile, not almost, but you wouldn't send a reaching, you know, the latter latter third of his life, Vulcan, that you don't need experience to go syringe thing, Jetson. You don't need experience for that. You just need good piloting and good... It, that it... being said, okay. what did they hope to accomplish by that? And I'm just going to go off on a little bit of a tangent for a second. Okay. So they used the red matter to... It's one drop, even they brought a bucket full, yeah. yeah they they use that to create a singularity that's yes. going to suck in the star that's going supernova. Yes. And then Romulus would have no star and would die anyway. Well, yeah, but yeah, but um, you still got, yeah, but the core temperature of the planet would still be warm for a few days, years, months. I mean, it's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to be an instantaneous. This the the planet cools, and I can imagine You'd be pretty that, much screwed right away. I, I I can imagine Romulus would have all their buildings that would have force fields that protect the heat. I mean, come on, there are there are other there are other planets, other races in other parts of the galaxy. I mean, come on, Breen, Breen culture, they exist Plus. in a hostile atmosphere. Yeah, I'm sure they still need to warm up their buildings. I mean, there's, there, there's ways of keeping something enough, just those extra few days to, to get everyone off planet. I mean, there's a difference I, between I, exploding the planet and making it so cold, the technology will break in a few days to then get I buy that. Off. I buy that a little bit, but yeah. I mean, you just take the sun away, it's just going to start hurling off into space. Well, it's, it's already exploding, though. Like, what else can you do? It's better than... And at least all the tech is they would still... Have, they would have had a, a good century or more notice that this star was going to go supernova. Well, in Star Trek Online, we know it was actually a, a, pl a plan. They made the Hobus star go supernova. It was a, it was a plan. So I get that. It was, it was an attack on Romulus. That's fine. But I mean, come on. Again, destroying all of Romulus or you you know later on just go visit there in a shuttle and just take your equipment. I mean, there's a difference between you know, it, destroying it all and leaving it. So I, I can see it being... I mean, it's, I, I think it's a decent plan, to be fair. But all you do is you bring a, say, the Enterprise E, flagship of the Federation, big, very good shields. You send one, you have one photon torpedo that has red matter in it. You warp in, you fire the torpedo, it does it. You're golden. Why would you send a one man small craft with all the red matter in the universe? Stupid plan. But again, it is. And, and why is it Vulcan Science Academy and not Starfleet? I mean, I, I, I love this still around, you know, doing their own thing. But you know, send a send a bigger ship that has abilities and crew and a good. Maybe track it wasn't record. sanctioned. Maybe Spock stole the jellyfish and decided no, to do it on its own. Well, no, you see it in the film. They give him the red matter and stuff. I don't know. It, it's it's just convenience for plot. But back to the design wise, again, the, the Vulcan Vulcan is a dry red planet, mm -hmm. which is basically a desert. Uh, a, it's called a jellyfish, which doesn't make sense because why would there be jellyfish on the... Well, not why, but the, I don't even... Do we even see a, any oceans on, on uh, Vulcan? I mean, I'm mean, i sure there are, but it seems such an odd evolutionary step to suddenly make it organic because they've never been about organic shapes or at least fully representative of organicness. I mean, what what's your take on that? I, I don't know why they would such a drastic departure from the regular design aesthetic. I, so I don't have a take on it because it makes no sense. I mean, possibly. Um, I can see again, Science Academy is not Starfleet, so it doesn't have to follow this, which, which is fine. I get that. Possibly it was the brainchild of a single scientist and he had... He was a bit wacky doodle. I mean, that I, I can buy that, sure. But, uh, you know, you could at least have called it a little bit more red to link in with other design aesthetic. Um... The spinning nature of the aft section is odd to me. 
it seems just for the sake of making something move. Um, exactly. And I do like that it kind of spins and it that like the gravity center sort of moves. That's interesting. But why? Why? That's that's. See, you look up JJ in the dictionary, and right beside it, it says "why?" question mark. Yes. It's just it's yes. just the way it is. Let's anyway. Let's move on to the next picture real quick. Yes, next picture. Uh, this is like a full orthos, um, although less detailed. It is sort of. This actually looks better, design wise. <laughs> it looks it looks simpler and sleeker, although yeah. definitely definitely not Star Trek. I mean, nothing about this is Star Trek. Well, apparently. it says here it's equipped with transmetaphasic shielding, which could be the reason. Transmetaphasic. That That's a new one. Yeah. So transphasic uh, is one is the, and the metaphasic is the one for the sun, which would make sense if we're dealing with supernovas. So I get that. And it's uh, shielding was capable of withstanding conditions that would destroy most other starships. Sure. So that kind of makes sense in a way why they would send that one on the mission. Oh wow! And it's capable of going through dangerous terrain, such as surviving the interior of a star. That sounds a bit silly. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, warp drive to warp eight. That's impressive. And two weapons rays at the front. I mean, so this is a science. Okay, now that's interesting. This is designed to be a science ship, and perhaps the rotating nature of the back part creates some sort of, uh, you know, how um, rotating uh, generators creates electricity. Maybe rotating these uh, keeps an active generation of a metaphasic field rather than just generators internal. It's actually keeping something in it. And it's, you know, when a wind turbine keeps spinning, it's almost, uh, you know, can spin forever. Maybe it's keeping in a, uh, what's that, perpetual metaphasic field, which allows it to stay inside a star, which I think is a little bit far-fetched because, my God, have you been inside a star? I haven't. Do you know why? It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, um, we know you can sort of well, skim the edge. Well, that said, even in Enterprise, there was that shuttle pod that Archer went with the guy to the sun, and I think they went... Did they actually go into the sun, or did they just go really close to the sun? Uh, which episode to that? Yeah, so it's when the Enterprise encounters the hypergiant star. I think the cogenitor, I think, is the name of the episode. Good memory. Um, um, yeah, and they get pretty close to it. But I... I, I, I don't still... know if they actually go into the corona or not, but I, I know they get very, very close. So. Well, we, well, that seems strange, though, because we know in TNG they have to develop new shields to get that close to the star. So I'm... I'm Oh no, I still think it's a bit of a stretch because that this this implies interior. I mean, that is such another level of of. of but that's what the interphasic, interphasic, metaphasic, transmetaphasic. Although why wouldn't thing? Spock just activate that when they start attacking him? Because then surely he could survive any weaponry. If you can survive a star, why can't you survive some missiles from a mining ship with Borg tech? That's actually a good question. Or when he gets beamed, or when he gets docked in the Narada, why just activate the shields and no one can get to him? That'd have been a good plan, Spock. So bloody senile, Jesus. Who knows? Who anyway, knows? anyway. So the next picture is it being constructed on Vulcan, I suppose. And again, what the hell is happening? <laughs> I mean, it's so dark, it's so grimy. The, the, it's it, lens flurry. Look, there's lens flurries. There, there. Does this scream Vulcan to you? I mean, this looks like this looks like a really nice remastered Babylon Five shot, or a new Battlestar Galactica Cylon ship. This is not at all Vulcan in any way. I mean, come on, Vulcans didn't build this bloody scaffolding. Come on, that's silly. We know exactly, I mean, ah. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a ship on loan to the Vulcan Science Academy. No, they built it specially. They, they LaForge built it and, and, and things. Um, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> well, uh, it's a nice picture. It's a nice matte painting or whatever. It looks amazing. Well, yes, yeah, it's a CG shot. It's a lovely shot. I mean, yeah, it looks great. It's just any generic sci-fi. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So let's go to the next picture. See some of the interior. Kind of a long corridor. Well, that that is Vulcan design. That is Vulcan design. Yep. Sure. No. Yeah. They they love their big tubes with white lights. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have much else to say. <laughs> Again, very Star Wars. Very generic. Yeah. There's nothing Vulcan. Nothing. And again. Well, Prime twenty four. Zachary Quinto there is Vulcan. Is he? I mean, there's oh. nothing Vulcan. Well, the design. He's a human. Shit. He's a human in disguise. What the hell? I don't know. It seems so strange. Well, let's go to the next picture. It's yeah. another shot of the interior. Maybe we can glean that, some. Well, oh, that's look, the, there's yeah. 
It's like a pyramid chair shape. It's the idic that they put when you walk in the ship. They go, oh, look, it's their symbol. And it's like, great, you made one bit of effort. Congrats. Yep, so the next picture is when they run at the ship in the movie. Uh, this is one thing I got to say that makes sense. With the way it's landed. It's not landed yep. up and down like it's, it is. It's landed flat, which makes mm-hmm. sense. So there I, you go. Something makes sense. Yeah, and I do like, I do like how it, it's, you know... It, What's the word? The, gy- cent- the center part's always yes. gyrating. It's the um. Not gyrating. No, the gy. <laughs> the gyroscope. Yeah, they were thinking. Yeah, no, yeah. I like how the ship is basically one big gyroscope. Uh, as you said, yeah, the gravity does change or whatever. I, I do like that. That's a cool feature. Um, again, it shouldn't have been Vulcan. I mean, I could have, I could have, if they'd said, it was a ship that, was developed by another race, and then I think the forge is meant to have helped design it. But if they'd it was another alien race's tech, and then LaForge helped with the shielding, and Spock was the red matter. I, if it was just a not Vulcan ship, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, random alien, not a problem. But you start linking it to races that we have very clear aesthetics. Now, again, we know that Enterprise designs, I mean, I have the Enterprise ships here. We know exactly what they look like a very long time ago. And I suppose if you, if this is what they had to go you know, from, yes, the organicness is very yeah. that 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 shape is quite reminiscent of turn it turn it backwards turn it backwards turn it backwards huh? like that there you go that's the jellyfish yeah same kind of design same kind of shape i can see that i really can i mean they 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 obviously vaguely stuck with the whole circular ring motif not in a strict speak strictly speaking ring but you do get that design through it i do suppose there is that again curvature i mean this that's very vaguely marini maybe it's certainly closer than this mm-hmm. so i do get that but again it doesn't i don't know it's it's difficult it still seems like i don't think you can class that you compare, NX, NX, you compare the nxo one to enterprise e same time period you can see yep nope direct connection compare these two like i mean we're we're we're, we're, we're making leaps there's no step there's no but then again, it's a science ship versus battleship. I mean, there's, you know, needs musts. But it's a weird What's one. that? I hear, I hear some of the people out there saying, but it's it's JJ. It's an alternate timeline. No, it's not. It's the prime timeline that the ship came from. I just want to point that out again. Yes. Because I know a lot of people are going to think that it's from a different timeline, and it's not. That's why it's so fascinating to look at the ship, because this is what should have been prime. Anyway, but if you look at the next picture, this is one of the, the big interesting things, is that just as we know, all of JJ Trek, they love windows. They love practical... <laughs> see-through, thin glass, transparent steel, whatever, windows. And in the previous images of the ship, we didn't get a sense of how actually far the window is pushing out. And my god, Spock is literally flush with the hull, and the entire viewport is outside of the hull. What's Good your take on that? Good range of view. Good range of view. Fantastic. What's your take on that, though, Stuart? <laughs> it's JJ, so it's confusing to me, and it just doesn't. It it it's not practical. The only good thing about that, literally, is you have unrestricted view, but you should have that with your sensors. Well, my so... argument would be you just pull that back into the ship and then have your same room and just have all the have all the screens be three sixty, and then you can just rotate and you've got screens. I mean, there you go. You've got better, and plus you you, know, you have data and things on it. I mean it. This 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 ship is designed to have metaphasic meta transfer whatever shielding, which means you're telling me that that they didn't even think it's worth having the part of with and this is a small ship it's one crew man they've said that before it's basically two or three sections of the ship it's not worth having the pilot the guy that you know you want to keep alive inside the hull when you're inside a star I know if the shield's fairly probably screwed either way but what if you're maybe going out of the star and the hull would be enough to survive, but suddenly you realize, shit, the glass is not strong enough, and it breaks, and you die, because you didn't put the hull, the hull in between. In um, all fairness, if you're heading out of the star, here's the star, you're heading out. you got yeah, the whole the temp- ship behind you to protect you. But the temperature would still resonate through the hull. I mean, the temperature would still be, the air temperature would still be massive. And I, I, it just seems ludicrous. Again, ludicrous. You don't have windows. Why? And Vulcans certainly don't have windows. If anything, Vulcans, if you look at the designs for these Vulcan ships, there's barely any. They're very unwindowed. We look at the um, Vulcan transport pod in motion picture. No windows at all. They don't do that. 
you know. Um, that's because that's just a shuttle, though. And this is just a one-person science ship. I mean, why have this? Again, this is not a Vulcan design. This is clearly just a random alien design they 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 took. I mean, that's what it is. Um, Speaking of ludicrous things, let's go to the next picture and look at that propulsion system. It's actually physically like Buck Rogers' fire shooting out of the back of that. Yes, we found this still specially because we know impulse engines aren't. It's a generation of particles and blah blah blah. There's no. You, know, you don't see a defiant flying by and there's these plumes. I, f I feel like they've repressed their technology a bit. Maybe this is more advanced somehow. Who knows? It's right. Reasons. They're now firing flame to go forward or particles. It looks like it looks like the Millennium Falcon's engine when it fires up and you see that <laughs> blast from the back. Is yeah. it just? It, I, I get I get the sense that when they designed this ship, they really just said, right, let's make it dynamic and things moving and, and everywhere on the ship something's happening so it looks cool. And at no point do they say, it's a Vulcan ship, a science vessel designed to go inside a star. That just wasn't a level in the design process because you wouldn't design it this way. You, it you... seems too flimsy to be going through a star for sure. Well, no, you can't say that because... Shield, shielding. shielding alleviates any need for aerodynamics or for hull. I mean, theoretically, True. if you had one generator that can provide strong enough field, you see a chair and, you know, a control panel. If the shield's strong enough, I mean, if there's enough power to generate it, you don't need anything else. So that's sort of... But why? It's confusing. And the next photo is another front shot. And again, I do like how it spins. It is interesting. And it's certainly visually interesting. Um, it adds mm. some dynamics. And this is one thing I didn't notice when um, looking at it the first time around. It's got four uh, holes, four tubes, although they appear to be disruptors rather than torpedoes. I don't think it would have that many torpedoes if it had any. Um, that's interesting, and very much like the Ares from Axonar with those four torpedo tubes. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, and again, we don't see Vulcan weapons really enough. That I'm fine with, because we don't see them enough to really judge what they do or don't have. Um, but it seems... And to be fair, they're blue. They're kind of the same color as the exhaust and all the stuff on the back yeah. so it could be direct feeded directly from the engine so they're like plasma bolts perhaps sure, like sure. getting rid of excess plasma because the way they shoot it's like pew, 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 like really quick rapid fire well they're pulse phasers aren't they pulse phasers, i don't know but... if they're phasers or whatever they are well presumably there's some offshoot the defiance weapons presumably just um in going sequence and i, I quite like you know their placement makes sense um you have good you know torpedoes coming and you can shoot it before it hits the very open glass window where you can actually see the enemy. You know, it's funny, those of us that have view screens, you know, we can just say, computer, zoom in to his, you know, bubble, because they've got zoom features, and you can just see his face, and you can see what he's looking at, and, and you know, in Red Dwarf, there's a great shot in the, in the Back to Earth where they take the ridiculous tropes of some of the sci-fi, and they, um, you know, to, to see an address of somebody, they zoom... They use some. They use uh, Crichton. He's a robot, so he has a picture of a, what he's looking at at the time. And he takes a reflection on a window, and the reflection they then zoom in and they rotate and then flip and then rotate onto the guy's glasses and then flip and rotate and it's like rotation, rotation, or flip. You know, and it's like and then so I'm sure they could just you know flip and zoom in onto the back of the cockpit and then flip the image and then zoom in and look at his control panel and say, oh my god, his shield. This is shield frequency and just do the whole generations thing in like two seconds. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. That's always been my b big beef with the whole view screen as a window thing. Because, yeah, your enemy could literally do that. Zoom in and actually lip read. Yeah. You know, you see, see exactly what you're saying. And, yeah. But anyway. Anyway. Right. So let's move on to the next picture. And this is from uh, the comic. So we've got... Countdown. It is, called the, it is called the Jellyfish. It is a prototype ship designed to withstand atmospheres that would tear most ships apart. Its pilot has agreed to help us. And I believe it may be our only hope. Hmm. Help me, jellyfish! You're my only hope. <laughs> uh, again, More Star Wars. Uh, yeah, it, it's so on the nose. I mean, jellyfish is such a. I mean, why not Surak? I mean, why not make it? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be exploration, why not call it the definitive stuff? You know, why not why not, why not even call it the Spock class? I mean. You know he's he's been legendary enough to to deserve or the Sarak class. I mean that'd be more of a a nice plug than the jellyfish because. It, again, they just said, let's make it organic because but, Vulcan... But that being said, is the Jellyfish its official class name or is that just a nickname because of the way it looks? And, and probably they got a couple of concept drawings and this one stood out. Yeah, that one looks like a Jellyfish. Oh, we'll just nick, give it the moniker of the Jellyfish. Okay, so it could be and it's stuck. the wrong round. I don't know. It just, it's, it's too organic to be Vulcan. I don't... 
Oh, it's just, it's just one of those weird ones. I just really wish JJ would have got so many points in my mind if they just kept the Kelvin basically TOS, you know, and then just kept the Jellyfish very Vulcan. If they had done those two things and then every, everything else beyond that point was his design, no problem at all. Like, I would have actually, the universe would have made sense to me because those timelines. But it's just confusing. It, I, I mean, then again, like I said earlier, you know, you're out to have the single scientist, the one quirky dude. You know that is a bit odd. I mean, in our, in our timeline, Vulcan hasn't been destroyed, and so there's billions of Vulcans that have been there for millions, well, extra hundreds of years. So there's lots of Vulcans out there all around the galaxy to help do cool designs. And, and Spock chose not to save all of them. Literally, Spock chose not to go back in time and save the guys that designed the ship in the future. He let all of the people who helped him build this ship in the future die because they never been born. What a seriously selfish man! It's crazy. Crazy what he didn't do. <laughs> crazy. Anyway. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts on the JJ, JJ Jellyfish design? Actually, hold on. Favourite thing and worst thing? Because I feel like we've got a lot of negatives. What is your favourite thing about this design and what do you like? Favourite thing is it's very unique, very out-of-the-box thinking, very cool little ship. Yeah, it's a cool a sci-fi ship. F- a cool so for a sci- sci-fi franchise, it's not Star Trek. Yes. Or for a totally new alien species in Star Trek. Yes. That's my favorite thing. It's a very cool looking little design and it's very dynamic the way it moves and it's yeah. awesome. But the downside is it is in the Star Trek universe. It is supposed to be Vulcan. And yet it's clearly not. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um... So yours, your favorite and least favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, favorite thing. It's a great design. It's a great, great design, and it would make so much sense in a brand new universe and any numbers of things. I think it's it's be okay as a Star Wars ship. It doesn't really feel Star Wars either. It hasn't got enough greebles or details. It's too organic for Star Wars. It almost. could be a Zindi aquatic f- uh, fighter from Perfect. the Next Generation era. There you go. Perfect. That Yeah, beautiful. Just call it a Zindi ship. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it just, yeah. Just for most JoJo stuff, it's a couple of steps to the side. Too far. Too and fun. it makes it wrong. So, great design. Love it. Great, great aesthetic. I would love to see authors of this. I'd love to see detailed CG shots to really get into the details. I know they put so much thought into it. I know there's lots of transparent bits. So they do nightmare to render all. I know that. I love it. But it's so un... what they built it as. Um, and, again, metaphysic shielding, you'd think, could also survive, you know, a couple of blasts from the Narada. So you would think... I, do, yeah, right. I have one more, one more thing to yep. say. Paint this black, a nice shiny gloss black, and it's almost like the aliens from Alien built Ooh. a ship. Yeah. <laughs> it's got that look. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Or just paint it red, don't have it spin, make it a bit more pointy, and you've got a Vulcan ship. And that would be so smart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, guys at CBS and Bad Robot, <sighs> you need to hire us because we would make your stuff. Awesome. And we would get Rick and John and Doug straight away in, Andrew, to help work on our team. Second day. Makes, makes sense. You know great I mean? team. Team Trek Yards. <laughs> and that is it for another Trek Yards mission briefing on a very unique ship. But like we said, we do like the design, just not as a Star Trek design. But that was sort of what JJ did. Anyway, let us know what you guys think of the design in the comments below. And let us know what franchise you think it would fit into. Because we've said a few, but... There are so many more franchises we don't know. Let us know. Maybe an anime it fits into. Let us know. Um, and yeah, let us know your favorite and worst thing uh, about the ship. And as always, guys, if you want to support the show and help us make these amazing... Uh, or make shows on these amazing ships, then please donate to our Patreon, our monthly scheme, to help the show going because this takes so much time to create the Saturday episodes and all the different content we produce weekly. And with your money, we can put that time in. And if you only can give a one-time donation, please go to our PayPal, which you can find at trackyards.com. Click that, click that PayPal donate button and support the show, even if it's a dollar. Preferably more, but, I mean, we thank you either way. So until then, guys, tune in next week for another great Trek Yards episode or Saturday or whatever day we happen to release something. So until then, it's Commander Coggins. And me, Captain Foley. We'll see you next time on Trek Yards. Bye, guys. Bye.